Vanchakaupatarubhyascha kripa sindhu bhayevacha patitanam bhavanebhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare So welcome everyone to our second day on Kapila Shiksha. We're studying Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter number 26 today at the level Bhakti Vaibhav. So let me go to the share the screen. Are you able to see okay? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Yes, see, Is it okay? Is it coming up? You can see? Yes, Maharaj, it is correct. All right. Kapila Shiksha. Yes, Chapter 26, Fundamental Principles of Material Nature. You can see the cover of Srimad Bhagavatam. You learn more about the creation just by looking at the cover of Srimad Bhagavatam than studying science for many lifetimes. Okay, a little glorification of Srimad Bhagavatam. O Srimad Bhagavatam, O nectar, churned from the ocean of all scriptures, you are the most prominent transcendental fruit of the Vedas, enriched with the jewels of all conclusive truth. You grant spiritual vision to all the people of the world. O oh, life breath of the Vaishnava devotees, O oh Lord, you are the sun which has risen to dispel the darkness of Kali Yuga. You are actually Lord Krishna who has returned among us. O oh, Srimad Bhagavatam, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. By your recitation, one attains transcendental bliss because your syllables shower pure love of God upon the reader. You are always to be served by everyone, for you are an incarnation of Lord Krishna. O Srimad Bhagavatam, O my only friend, O my companion, O my teacher, O my great wealth, O my deliverer, O oh, my good fortune, O oh, my bliss, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. O oh, Srimad Bhagavatam, O oh, bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O oh, uplifter of the most fallen, please don't ever leave me, accompanied by pure love of Krishna, please manifest yourself in my heart and in my throat. Okay. I'll We'll review a little yesterday, the questions asked by Devahuti. In text 29, she's asking, what is the jnana by which one understands tattvas? And we'll get the answer to that today in text 26, in chapters 26, and then again in chapter 27. And then question 4. What is the yoga mentioned by you 
which is aimed at the Lord for liberation. How many limbs does it have? And that's answered in chapter 28. Maitreya says, after hearing the statement of his mother, Kapila could understand her purpose and he became compassionate towards her because of being born of her body. He described the Sankhya system of philosophy, which is a combination of devotional service and mystic realization, as received by disciplic succession. That is from text number 31. And then yesterday we also spoke about how bhakti is far better than mukti. Lord Kapila said, from text number 32, the senses are symbolic representation of the demigods and their natural inclination is to work under the direction of the Vedic injunctions. As the senses are representatives of the demigods, so the mind is the representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The mind's natural duty is to serve. So I remember yesterday one Madhiji was asking, well, what about the intelligence? Where's the intelligence? So, intelligence is also the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is absolute. There's no difference between his body and his soul. So, the mind, the intelligence, the ego, the soul, they're all the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There's nothing above the Supreme Personality of Godhead. I know in the, you're, you're thinking of the Bhagavad Gita, that the senses are higher than, uh, uh, what is it? The, the mind is higher than the senses and the intelligence is higher than the mind and, and he, the soul, is still higher. And so you're thinking like, where's intelligence? And so mind, intelligence, body, soul, it's all the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There's no difference in the spiritual world. When you have a spiritual body, the body, the soul, mind is all the same. That's my answer to your question. But we should understand there's nothing above the Personality of Godhead. Just like sometimes we are explaining everything comes from Krishna, right? Sometimes we, we, we give a lecture, we talk to people, maybe little new people. Or I remember one time I was with Jayadweta Swami and we were in New, it was in New York, we went to a college and Maharaj was giving a class and he was talking to them how Krishna is the source of everything. Everything comes from him. So there was this one student was asking him, well, where does Krishna come from? <laughs> he said, everything comes from Krishna. Where does Krishna come from? <laughs> you know, what do you say to a person like that? Where does Krishna come from? We said, everything comes from Krishna. Where, and he's saying, where does Krishna come from? Krishna is the absolute truth. He is the source of everything. <laughs> you have to understand the meaning of God. If we are asking, where does Krishna come from? There's, everything comes from Krishna. Where does he come from? He, he is everything. <laughs> you know, we have to understand the position of the absolute truth. This is the point. Okay, we'll go ahead. Then, list reasons why bhakti is superior to yoga. We spoke about that. Persons whose minds are fixed, engaged in the intensive practice of devotional service. The only means for attainment of the final perfection of life. If we want to fix the mind, we have to do devotional service. And if our mind is fixed on Krishna, we have to be engaged in devotional service. There's no other way we want to fix the mind. 
and then fix the mind. First of all, the mind should be engaged at the lotus feet of the Lord very steadily and naturally because the mind is the master of the senses. When the mind is engaged, all the senses become engaged. That is bhakti yoga. The, the senses follow the mind. So connection with the previous chapter. Being requested by his mother, Lord Kapila first described bhakti yoga, which is the heart of Sankhya. Now, in this chapter, chapter 26, he will equip us with the acts of knowledge by which we can cut material attachments and then practice pure devotional service. Maybe you remember that section in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 15. Lord Krishna is describing the tree with the branches down and the roots up. Urva Mula Madasaka, right? So, you're in the banyan tree, how to get out? You have to have the axe, the axe of detachment, and that detachment is sharpened by transcendental knowledge. With the knowledge, the axe of knowledge, we can cut the material attachment, come to pure devotional service. In chapter 26, Kapila will discuss about Gyan Sankhya, answering to question 3. The manifestation and characteristics of the elements, such as the Mahatattva, the universal form composed of those elements, and thus being brought to life by the entrance of the Lord. Right? Everyone knows what is Mahatattva, right? You've been studying creation. You studied creation, I think, three times already. So you all know what is the Mahatattva. So we'll hear about every all the, the creation. We're going to uh, give the the analysis of all the different elements in the material creation. So look at the breakdown of the chapter, chapter 26, it begins the first section up to verse number 8, liberation by understanding the different categories of the Absolute Truth. Yes, there are different categories of the Absolute Truth. Vadanti tad tadvam vidyam tadvam madvayam. Brahmati Paramatmati Bhagavan Hiti Shabyati. Learned transcendentalists who know the Absolute Truth call this non dual substance as Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. So different categories are there of the Absolute Truth. So Lord Kapila discusses that first. Then he explains verses 9 to 18, the 24 elements and the time factor. You've already studied this somewhat in the Bhagavad Gita. It was mentioned there in the 13th chapter, Bhagavad Gita, 24 elements. And then next section, 19 to 30, the manifestation of the subtle elements from the Mahatattva. The subtle elements, the mind, the intelligence, the ego. Thirty-one to forty-nine, the evolution of the gross elements from ether to earth. Right? Creation comes about from subtle to gross. So it's from ether to earth. You've already studied that. I think you should be quite familiar with that, how the different elements evolve. And then the final section from verse number 50 up to the end of the chapter, the universal coverings and the universal form. And we'll hear how the universal form is awakened. All right, so this is the different sections which are there in this chapter. It's a big chapter, 72 verses. And it's, it's very analytical, a lot of gyan, 
lot of description of the different elements and the qualities. So you have to read it, you have to read it again, you have to read it again. I've read it so many times. The chapter begins, Lord Kapila is speaking to his mother. My dear mother, now I shall describe unto you the different categories of the Absolute Truth knowing which any person can be released from the influence of the modes of material nature. Hmm. If, we if we understand the Absolute Truth, then we won't be under the modes of material nature. Of course, not very easy to understand these different categories, how much we understand them. That's a different thing. We know a little bit. So, what is the benefit of hearing this Sankhya philosophy? Lord Kapila said, I will describe the different features of the material elements, knowing which one is freed from the influence of the material modes. That's something very valuable, to be able to get over the modes of material nature the passion and the ignorance, and to come to the platform of pure goodness. Second thing, we can attain perfection of self-realization. Not just simply knowing ourselves that we're not the body, but going on to understand our relationship with the Supreme Lord. And then the third item, cut the knot of attachment to the material world. So long as we're attached to the material world, we cannot awaken our Krishna consciousness. We have to let go. That's the final offense in chanting Hare Krishna, tenth offense, to maintain material attachment, even after understanding so many instructions in the matter. So, this knowledge, if we absorb this knowledge of Sankhya, it will help us to cut the knot of attachment to the material existence. So this first section, dealing with the different categories of the Absolute Truth, describe also the Jiva, and Prakriti and Purush, interactions and characteristics. This is a topic which was also touched in, on in Bhagavad Gita. Chapter 5 discusses this and comes up again. Interactions, characteristics of the Jiva, Prakriti and Purusha. So from verse number 3, we get the characteristics of the Purusha. Purusha meaning the Supreme Lord. And also maybe those who are imitating the Supreme Lord, they're also trying to be Purusha. So the, the Supreme Lord is the actual Purusha and he's described as Anadi without a beginning. Atma, the Supreme Soul, Nirguna. He's transcendental to the modes of nature. He's not under the mode, he's not conditioned. Transcendental. Prakriti para, beyond this material world. Pratyaktama, perceivable everywhere. <laughs> this is the Supreme Lord. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. And he's... omnipresent, omniscient, om, omnipotent, can do anything with all of his different senses. And Swayam Jyoti, self-effulgent, self-effulgent, we have the effulgence 
of the, we get the light from the moon, the moon gets the light from the sun, the sun gets the light from the Brahman, the Brahman gets the light from the body coming from Lord Krishna, from the body of Lord Krishna. So the Supreme Purusha, Lord Sri Krishna, he is Swayam Jyoti, he is self-effulgent. All the effulgence is coming from him. Vishwam Yena Samanvitam, by whom the entire creation is maintained. He is maintaining all of us. We cannot maintain, we are dependent on Him for everything. Every, what do we have? We, we can do nothing, we are helpless. But He is maintaining us. This should be understood. Then from verse 5 to number 7, the Jiva Prakriti interactions. Text 9 describes more about Prakriti and Purusha. The text then, the characteristics of Pradhan. The Pradhan, right? We have the Mahatadva and we have the Pradhan. The Pradhan is the unmanifested stage of the material elements. And the Mahatadva is where they become manifest. So characteristics of Pradhan from text number 10. Trigunam, combination of the three modes. Avyaktam, unmanifested. Nityam, eternal. Sadasat, atmakam, consisting of cause and effect. So the pradhan is eternal. Sometimes it's unmanifest, sometimes it's manifest, but it's always it's eternal, it's always existing. Sometimes it's created, sometimes it's destroyed, it's still existing. When it's destroyed, it's existing in a subtle form. Prakritim prakriti pra, they call avishesham, undifferentiated. The undifferentiated Brahman, like that. It means we can, you cannot distinguish one thing, one element from another. It's, we give the example just like Halava. You know, when you're cooking, you have halava, you have so many ingredients go in the halava. You have the suji, and you have the sugar, and you have the water, and you, you know, may put some other things in there. But once you cook it up, it just becomes a merge, right? You can't distinguish what, you couldn't pick out the sugar, you couldn't pick out the water. You, it's all mixed up, the ghee, it's all there together. So this is the pradhan, undifferentiated. Vish, visheshavat, possessing differentiation. So it's undifferentiated and at the same time it has the ability to be differentiated. When it becomes manifest in different elements for the sake of creation, then differentiation is possible. Then text 11 to 14 describe the different products of the pr Pradhan. The Pradhan is the unmanifested stage, so you, you come to the manifest stage. And in the manifest stage, the 24 elements are there. And these 24 elements are listed. Five gross elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether. Five tanmatras the sense objects, right? The sense of touch, sense of smell, sense of sight, sense of hearing, and the sense of tasting. Ten senses, five working senses, five knowledge acquiring senses. The working senses, the, the hands, the legs, the voice, the organ to procreate and the organ to evacuate. And the knowledge acquiring senses, the eyes, the tongue, the nose, the ear, and the skin. And four internal senses, mind, intelligence, false ego, and chitta. Chitta, or we could use, may say consciousness. Okay, so we should know these things, 
This is very basic, very important, the 24 elements. So, in one, at one point it's undifferentiated, another point is there's differentiation. Okay, so we have some exercise. We have to put devotees into groups, Prabhu. How many people have we got today in the class? 44. 44. Okay. So then you have to have uh, maybe six, eight, sorry. Uh. Madhava Prabhu, could you help me? Could maybe. Yes, please, uh, if you can make me my host, I can do it. Okay, you are already co host, bro. Okay, how many, we, have, we need at least, uh, I think I've got five exercises here, uh, so we want five, maybe you could have ten groups or something like that, you could make ten groups, all right, oh no, there's only four, so four, so groups, you can have eight, eight groups, eight into forty-four, uh, five and six in some groups, and five in other groups. Six in four groups and five in four groups. Like that. Eight groups. And we have exercises. You can see the exercises. Right? So this, because it's a long chapter, there's a lot of things to go through. So we'll let each group go through different sections of the chapter. Group 1 will work on text 10 to 18. Group 2 will work on text 19 to 30. Then group 3 on text 31 to 49. And group 4 on text 50 to 71. And you can see the sections in each of the questions which you have to do. How long we can discuss it, Maharaj? We'll give you some time, uh, like 10, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, minutes. probably, see, 10 minutes, let's see, if, you get, if you're ready after 10 minutes, we can come together, see how it goes, if you need more time, we'll give more time, all right? So, Gadada Prabhu, this yes. is a group, uh, even though I'm host, but group is not open for me yet. Okay, I'll we'll make you as a host, okay? You are already host, Madhava Kanta Prabhu. Okay. Maybe, maybe you should make four groups and we'll have eleven in each group. And then they can do, they can do, make up, and within each group a few people can work on each of the questions. Yes, my right. Still so, four, four groups? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the can join the group. So, group one, your question is there, and you have to divide up the work among the group. Different members can take different parts of the question. And group two, your question is also there. Divide up the group. Right? Group three, group three, you have to, uh, right? You want to summarize? So, some, one, some of the group can do the summarizing, and the other group will have to work on the qualities. Start with. 
three questions for group one. You have to divide up the work among the members in the group. Okay. Uh, so, Dr. Kurani Mataji, you were saying something, or we can divide the three. Yeah, that's why I'm saying we have three questions, and just we have divided that and discussed it is very easy. In the breakout room, can we put in chat box? Uh, yes, Madhuji, you can put in the chat. Yes. Okay, take somebody type, type it because... Uh, I can type, just tell quickly. Okay, I have it in my photo. Okay. Explain oh. the universal coverings. Yeah. Second one, describe the Virat Rupa. Drawing practical lessons from it. And uh, Mataji, what are the related strokas, please? 50 to 71. Sorry? 50, 50 to 71. Okay, thank you. If you don't mind, can you put a photo in the group at the Bhakti? Okay. I, will, I will just put try to put the photo i'm not too savvy but i don't know how to put the four chat in the this one but i will go and you check can, you can just share the screen okay i will just send it by whatsapp to okay, okay. Our... just send to me you just put put in the group I, i'll put it yeah. yeah i'll just put in the group that i know how to do it Okay, I put in the group, Mahanda Kanta Prabhu. Uh, from 19 until 25 and the rest of devotees is from 26 until 30 okay okay thank you Hare Krishna Adharaj Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu. Just you can post the question, Prabhu. Just summarize the transformation of the grass elements. Just... Okay, I'll read again the question. The question is, summarize the transformations of the grass elements from ether to earth along with their specific qualities. Summarize the transformations of the grass elements from ether to earth, along with their specific collocation. Okay, thank you. Okay, very good. It's chapter 29, yes? Bro, we are 26, Robo. Uh, 26. Chapter 26. 26. Yes, good. In 
Intelligence product. Intelligence is product of ego to question. <coughs> Intelligence is product of ego. There is a distinction between Mind is a product of goodness, and intelligence is a product of egoism and passion. Now, since mind is a product of the mode of goodness, since If we transform our desire to be a superhero, we transform our desire to please God and let it be perfection. If anyone wants to adopt this into your life, he has to come back to what we do with the vision to build the desire for Jewish service. Desire cannot be stored, but if we can transfer, so if transfer our desire into pleasing virtue, that will be perfection. Both kinds of senses as for Okay, Hare Krishna. Can we, do we need more time? At least start summarizing what you are thinking. <clears throat> yeah, we don't need much point because uh, our group, uh, what I call it, we can summarize. We only need to summarize. Uh, anybody can. Uh, Prabhu, Prabhu 33, I cannot read 33. 31, 32 only. 33, I cannot read. Who can read 33? I will read only 31, 32. 32. Uh, yes. I will not allow. Uh, Yes. Anybody have completed reading? They can take up uh, 33. When you want to say, Mata J. Want to say, Mata J. Yes, Baba. Can you take down uh, our discussion, Mata J? Possible. I have not done any points. I'm just doing this to focus. No, what I mean is that all of us could uh, say out the points. You just write down. Nobody else is ready. So why don't you take it, Prabhu? <laughs> if nobody is ready, I'll go ahead. No issues. If you can take it, good enough. 
I am a very bad writer. <laughs> oh, no. Because if I coordinate, then I think that will be difficult for me. So somebody have to coordinate. Don't, don't me. Okay. I'll write down. Yeah. Okay. Can we start off? Uh, start with the uh, uh, thirty-one. Upananda Prabhu, can you start? Uh, what we have to do? We have to summarize transformation of the gross element from ether to earth. So, yeah, uh, yeah that's the uh, first thing. So, from if the sloka thirty one, Prabhu, what what is written yeah. there? From sloka thirty one, I am telling. Yes. The difference between mind and intelligence. There is the difference. That is, intelligence said to be product of ego in passion. There is the distinction between mind and intelligence. Should I slowly tell you? Slowly. Yeah, slowly. Should so that Mataji can okay. write down uh, oh, slowly. Okay, okay. Ah. I am telling. Intelligence is said to be product of ego. Prabhu, before yes. that, Prabhu, uh, Prabhu, Hare Krishna, Prabhu and Mataji, do you think that uh, we can have a flow chart from how ether is transformed to end product of our earth. That would be nice if we can have a flow chart from ether to next is what uh, days. Then uh, slowly with the flow chart, what do you all think? Uh, Anybody have an idea what is the flow chart transformation from ether to earth? I think that's a good idea, but because we haven't. Yeah, we haven't. Because, because we haven't, we, are, like, well, we, we haven't read each others. I think it's going to be different. Yeah, un unless it's going to be different. Anybody? Yeah, anybody have that no? the chitta one? 25 minutes. 25, I'll explain, yes, yeah. Thank you. The entire thing, right? Uh, so, uh, for you, I'm doing first 14. Okay. So, I'm making a list of all the elements. Yes. And uh, later on, uh, your part, what is there in your part that you're reading? Actually, in my parts also there is mention about this, uh, like, uh, for example, this, uh, the other get, might get disturbed, but I will share you in the yes. Yes. Yeah, from my notes. So, are you ladies ready, do you think? So, uh, I will talk about the 25 elements, and you will talk about uh, the four things, right? The four slokas. It will be together. I will just share my thoughts. Okay. Are, are, are you ready, do you think? Yes. Do you need more time? Yeah, five minutes can I get. Five minutes more? Yes. Okay. Hare Krishna. How, how are you doing, Prabhus? Do you need more time? Uh, how much more time do we have? How much time do you need? Probably, Krishna Maharaj? Probably you can, uh, can give us 10 minutes again, Maharaj? No, okay. not 10 okay. minutes. 5 minutes. Okay, okay 5 minutes. <laughs> okay. I can't hear. Uh, five Prabhu, minutes, Mataji. How much time five do we minutes. have? 5 minutes. 5 minutes, Mataji. 5 minutes. You can hear me? Problem, I'm not able to hear. Oh, maybe problem five. in your connection. Five minutes. Yes, five minutes. <laughs> Oh, 
uh, sound ether mm. comes okay so in ether there is no form but there is only uh, feel touch is there okay yes. only touch then is after that then when when the fire comes with the in the fire there is a form and and touch. A feel i mean mm. the touch and mm. there is a and heat. sound also sound also okay and sound also. The then yes. next comes water in water there is a form there is a touch there is uh, yes so all these three plus taste 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 yes then in taste. water all those uh, touch plus smell uh, plus smell that smell that give to earth that give rise to earth yes 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 earth is for the form touch uh, yes, uh, in addition smell and other elements Yes, so we know each and every element one thing keeps adding keep adding yes brother yeah and uh, uh, one more thing i think uh, we need to uh, uh, add the specific quality of each item maybe the, because the question requires that so, what is the quality of the earth the water fire and it uh, so Uh, actually if you are asking about tanmatra generally if you open uh, bhagavata subodhini in third yes. canto there is a, a tabular form which shows everything easily you can just refer to that in third canto in bhagavata subodhini in the second book it is there if you just open that like, you have it have prabhu if you have we can read out prabhu i am in the hospital <laughs> <laughs> actually my I, I met with an accident, so you know, I reached. I met with. Can you please take care, Ramanand Prabhu? I'll take it out. I have the support in India. Yeah, I'll go and prepare to move. So, yes, sir, please, please, thank, thank you. you so much for your share. Yeah, it's a lot thank of help, sir. Thank you. So you, you have three more minutes. You have you have three more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. <laughs> Layers. Yes. Yes, ma'am. And each layer is ten times thicker than the previously. Okay, you have two more minutes. Are you nearly ready? No, Maharaj. We need five minutes, Maharaj. At least five minutes. Three minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. Okay. What is the next question? No, no, no. The matter is covered. It. Hare Krishna Prabhu Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Prabhu Hare Bo
the supreme ruler of the Okay, universe. time time is up. You got to okay, come Okay, Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Time. You close the rooms, close all the rooms. Okay, Maharaj. Hare Who's Krishna. Okay. So Mataji and Prabhu can present okay? Hare Krishna. Are you the are you hosting this? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Did you close all the rooms? Yes, Maharaj. Now we'll like close the room. You're not supposed to be in there. You're supposed to be in the main room. Somebody has to be in the main room to close the rooms. I couldn't find you. Uh, Madhava Kanta Prabhu actually in the main room, Maharaj. He didn't respond. I'm asking who's there. Nobody's answering. Okay. Madhava Kanta. Where is he? Where is Madhava Kanta? He is still in another room, Maharaj. So get him out of the room. He's not supposed to be in the rooms. Somebody has to be in the main room. Uh, yes, yes. Have you closed all the rooms? Is everybody back now? Uh, not yet, Maharaj. I do not know how to close the room. So Maharaj Kanta Prabhu will close the room. So I will call him. Yeah, this is taking so much time. Where did he go? This is not good. Come on, it's hurry, hurry up, get everybody back. What are you doing? I am still calling Madhava Kanta Prabhu Maharaj. Sorry, I, I, I do not know the technical of how to back up. Hare Krishna Madhava Kanta Prabhu, you can close the room, all the rooms. Okay. Now Maharaj is waiting. Okay, Hare Krishna. Okay, Maharaj, he already closed the room. All right, so we'll begin group number one. Let's have group number one make that. Who, who's going to be the spokesman for group one? Group one is dealing, first of all, explain Pradhan and Prakriti. Yes, who are the people? Group number one. Still discussing no, no, you have to come out now. Finish. Come on, get out. You have to stop discussing. No time anymore. You already had so much time. So, who's going to speak? Yes? Who's the spokesman for group one? 
Antrang Tulsi Mataji, you prepared, right? You want to uh, share from group one? You can have three spokesmen. There are three parts to the question. The first part is Pradhan and Prakriti. Then we want somebody else who will speak on the second part and someone else on the third part. Okay. So I'll be speaking. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. This is Antakaranga Tulasi Devi Dasi. I'm from group one. And I'll be presenting on Pradhana and Prakriti. Then we have Sakhi Nanda Priya Mataji who will be presenting on the 25 elements. So regarding Pradhana and Prakriti, what if I could understand is uh, from text 10 to 18. Pradhana is the unmanifested Abhyakta. Uh, the aggregate of three modes, three gunam, the cause of prakriti, which is the manifested stage, and it consists of cause and effect, sadhasat atmakam. It is undifferentiated, but yet it is full of variety. So, pradhana consists all the elements, the 24 elements, which Mataji will explain. It contains all of them in an unmanifested state, and when the Lord, as the 25th element, the time, comes and agitates it, then this pradhana becomes prakriti, where all these 24 elements are manifested. Yes. This is pradhana and prakriti, the difference between pradhana and prakriti. Yes, very good. Thank you very much. Now we have Sakhi Mataji who will be telling about the 25 elements. Yes. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, accept our humble obeisances and pranam. So the sum total of living entities impregnated as Mataji has explained, now uh, the elements, there are the, of the 25 elements, uh, we have the five gross elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether. And the subtle, five subtle elements, smell, taste, color, touch, and sound. Then the knowledge acquiring senses, uh, the sense, auditory senses, the sense of taste, tactile senses, sense of sight, sense of smell. Then the uh, active organs, uh, that is the um, working senses, for speaking, working, traveling, generating, and evacuating. And then there are four internal senses, mind, intelligence, ego, and contaminated consciousness. So uh, regarding the contaminated consciousness, uh, in the 14th shloka, uh, the consciousness is a function of the soul, and therefore behind the consciousness, there is, a, there is soul. So consciousness, which is polluted by material contamination, is called ahankar. This is, this is what uh, Prabhupada explains in the purport. And uh, regarding the, the 20, 25th element, the time factor. So the Lord is, uh, he, uh, the, uh, the Lord is present uh, amongst this element in the form of the time factor. So, uh, so without the time, he is present as time factor without. And within he is present as the super soul. So Prabhupada explains the super soul as the 26th. Uh, factor uh, uh, which when we total up the entire thing because without the presence of the Lord uh, the material uh, elements cannot work on it. The Lord's presence as time factor and the super soul makes everything work. Hare Krishna. Oh, very good. Very good. So 25th element is time and 26th element is the Lord himself. Huh? Okay, and who's taking the third part, the difference between Nirguna and Saguna Brahman? Yes, So, when Brahman is mixed with three qualities, goodness, passion, and ignorance, uh, it is called Saguna Brahman. And it consists of 25 elements. And is, it is described in Sankhya philosophy. And in the Nirguna Brahman, there is no material contamination, so without goodness, passion, and ignorance. And uh, there is only an alloy goodness. So is the deity Saguna Brahman or Nirguna Brahman? Uh, deity is. Saguna Brahman. Nirguna Brahman. Nirguna Brahman. Can you explain? Diti is Nirguna. Diti? Diti is Nirguna Brahman Prabhu. Ah, ah, Maharaj. What does it mean? It means the deity doesn't have any qualities? Ah, uh, uh, he has 
no quality for the uh, material world, uh, material nature. Is is quality is uh, 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 spiritual, Maharaj. Transcendental. Yes. Okay. Very good. Transcendental. Yes. Right. Thank you, Mataji. Very nice. Okay. Hare Krishna. Okay, group one did very good. Thank you very much. And now group two. Who is group two? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, first of all define uh, Mahatattva. Yes Maharaj. So the first part of the question for us was Mahatattva. So Mahatattva, it's after the Prakriti is agitated uh, by time, the Lord impregnates uh, <coughs> the, the material uh, uh, impregnates the material nature oh, sorry he impregnates uh, a material nature with his internal potency and out of which the sum total of the cosmic intelligence uh, comes out which is called the Hiranmaya and uh, the important points uh, that Prabhupada makes in this is that the living entities are all spiritual by nature because they, it comes out of impregnation by the Lord and after impregnation, the material nature delivers all kinds of living entities, um, the beginning from Brahma down to the smallest, uh, uh, you know, the uh, atomic uh, living creatures as well. And uh, the living force actually comes directly from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And therefore, it is completely spiritual. So, uh, no, uh, Prabhupada says, no material scientific advancement can produce life. Because the living force, has, it is spiritual and it comes from the spiritual world and it has nothing to do with the interactions of the material elements. And uh, this uh, Mahatattva, uh, it cannot be destroyed even at the time of annihilation, it is not destroyed. And uh, also Prabhupada makes the point that uh, the uh, just as a person in the night, uh, he remains inactive but as the daylight comes, uh, he becomes awake. Similarly, the Mahatattva appears after the night of dissolution and uh, the effulgence is manifest uh, which exhibits the variegatedness in the material world. And uh, then we have that the first mode of goodness um, which is the, uh, uh, the Sattva Guna which is clear sober status of understanding Lord. It is called Vasudeva uh, or Chitta and it manifests in the Mahatattva. And uh, the characteristic of the chitta is that it is a representation of Mahatattva in the body of the jiva. And uh, in its uh, pure uh, consciousness, um, you know, the Prabhupada gives the example of like water. In its natural state, it is very clear, sweet and unruffled. Like that, in pure consciousness, um, one can see things as they are. And one can see the reflection of Supreme Personality in their consciousness. So, the state of consciousness is very pleasing, transparent and sober. So it says in the beginning the consciousness is actually very pure. So the second part uh, will be presented by um, Parikshit. So can, can you just give me a, 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 a more basic, simple definition of what is the Mahatattva? Um, yes. So. The uh, Mahatattva, as uh, it's explained here, is that um, in the text 19, uh, we find that uh, uh, the material nature, which is um, the, the Supreme Personality of Godhead impregnates the material nature with his internal potency and out of which the uh, Hiranmaya or the sum total of all the ingredients uh, comes about. So. Where does the Mahatattva come from? From the Pradhan, from Maharaj. From the Pradhan? Yeah. Yes, from the Pradhan. Pradhan, which is in the unmanifest state, uh, when that is agitated by the Supreme Lord, uh, combined with the time factor, uh, and the, you know, what we had learned earlier, that uh, when it is agitated by the uh, karma of all the living entities, uh, the Supreme Lord and uh, the time factor, from that comes the, and all the, the to some total of all the material ingredients. So all which is called the Mahatattva. Oh, so all the material ingredients are in the Mahatattva? 
Yes? Yes, Maharaj. But they're, yes, Maharaj. But they're all mixed together. Like, is it? Are, are they... Is it differentiated or undifferentiated? Can you um, distinguish one element from another or is it just a merge? Uh, they cannot be dif distinguished at that point in time. Are the modes of nature there in the Mahatattva? Um, I'm not sure, Marat, sorry. Have a look. Read more. Read it again. Does it mention the modes of nature? Are the modes of nature there in the Mahatattva? Are they in the Pradhan? When do the modes of nature come? They come in the... Um, uh, they are uh, manifest in the Mahatattva. They come from the Mahatattva. The modes of nature come from the Mahatattva. Okay, no, I think I need to read, Maharaj. Okay, so you read. We'll come back to you. Okay, sure. Yeah. Who's going to answer the second part? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Hare Krishna. This is Parikshit Das. So material, uh, uh, the second part is about the false ego, the mind and the presiding deities. So the material ego, it springs from the platform of the Mahat Tattva and this consists of the three modes of material nature, goodness, passion and ignorance. From these three modes comes the mind. Where, the where, mind where did the three modes come from? From the material ego, Maharaj. The three modes of nature came from the material ego. Okay. Then from the, this, from material ego comes the three modes, goodness, passion and ignorance. Then comes the mind. Then comes the senses of perception and organs of action. And then eventually comes the gross elements. So ahankar or false ego is the source or the cause of all this mind, senses of perception, organs of action and gross elements. And it is considered as not different from them. And the presiding deity is Sankarshan or Lord Anand is uh, the presiding deity for ahankar or the false ego. So the evolution, how this takes place is like initially the consciousness is pure, it is pure Krishna consciousness for the soul. When it gets contaminated because of the misuse of free intelligence or free will which we have, it results in false ego, which means where we identify the self with the body. And this false ego is the cause of fall down. From the material mind, the senses and the organs, they eventually come. When the false ego is mixed with goodness, it will give rise to the mind. The presiding deity for the mind is Lord Aniruddha. And when the false ego is mixed with passion, it gives rise to intelligence. Isn't this unusual? That usually we think intelligence is higher than the mind. But here we, we learn that the intelligence comes from false ego and passion. And the mind comes from false ego in goodness. Yes, Maharaj. Isn't this a little surprising? Yes, Maharaj. There's an explanation given. And according to Ayurveda, the Ayurveda doctors, they say that intelligence is used for planning and planning is in the mode of passion. Whereas the mind just simply desires. So the mind just simply acts, there's no planning, it's more spontaneous. So that's more in the mode of goodness. The, the intelligence, the intelligence for planning. This is how the IRB doctors explain it. Anyway, it's an important point to note that intelligence comes from false ego in the mode of passion, 
and the mind comes from false ego in the mode of goodness. So the presiding deity of the mind is Aniruddha, and the presiding deity of intelligence is who? I couldn't find Maharaj in the translations and puppets. Oh, it didn't mention? It's not mentioned. Prajumna. Prajumna, is it? Not mentioned? It's mentioned Maharaj, in the twenty uh, first verse. Text, text twenty one. Purport the last paragraph. Okay. So it's Prajumna, right? Yes, Maharaj, it's Prajumna. Okay, thank you, Madhaji. And who is it? And we said Sankarshan is the presiding deity of false ego, right? Yes, Maharaj. And who is the presiding deity for consciousness? Yes, I think Vasudev would be right. So you have Vasudev, Aniruddha, Prajumna, and Sankarshan. All right. Can you can you explain more about the difference between intelligence and mind? What is the mind doing? The function? So the mind gives, a, like mind reflects and thinks about it which gives rise to the desire as you explained and that's why it's in the like the mode of goodness sort of thing, false ego contaminated with goodness. But the intelligence is used for uh, in a more passionate way where we uh, like actually think about doing activities. So that's why intelligence is from the passion and uh, it uh, also analyzes the situation and the objects in the whether it is good or bad. Right. And what about consciousness? It is complete serenity. Consciousness is complete serenity. Yeah. Yeah. Consciousness is complete serenity and it gives clarity and freedom from the from any sort of distractions. Oh. Freedom from any distraction. Complete serenity, yeah? <laughs> so false ego is inf false ego with. How did you explain that again? When the pure con Krishna consciousness of the spirit soul is contaminated because of the misuse of our independence or free will, this results in false ego. Uh -huh where we start identifying the body with the self uh -huh. and this false ego eventually leads to fall down. Okay, false ego, identifying with the self, identifying, this is mine, this belongs to me, I did this, I'm the doer. All right? Okay, thank you Prabhu. Thank you. So can we come back to the lady Mataji was telling us about Mahatadva? Yes, uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, yes, Maharaj. So my understanding is that uh, Mahatattva is actually there in the uh, sorry, the three modes are already there in the prakriti, but they become more prominent uh, uh, when it uh, once it comes in contact with the ahankara. So are the three modes in the Mahatattva? Yes, Maharaj, it is there in the Mahatattva. It's there in the Mahatattva. Is it there in the Pradhan? Uh, yes, it is there in the Pradhan as well, because the Prakriti actually comes from the Pradhan only, no, Maharaj. Well, the Prakriti, does the Prakriti also come from the Mahatattva? Yes, Maharaj. 
you know, the pra from the Pradhan we get the Mahatattva, right? And the Mahat yes, Maharaj. And from the Mahatattva then the pra Prakriti is manifest. Yes, Maharaj. Oh, okay. And then three modes of nature are there. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, thank you. All right, so we'll go on to group number three to summarize the transformations of the gross elements from ether to earth, first of all. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, we are group number three and we had nine members. So I'm Pandav Sikhi Kripa Devi Dasi Maharaj and I'll just try to express whatever I understood. So, Maharaj, in verse number 31, the senses have been explained, the Indriya, and it has been said that they appear from the false ego and passion. And uh, the five action senses and the five knowledge senses, it has been explained by Shri Prabhupada that uh, the five action senses, they depend on the pran, and the five knowledge senses, they depend on the intelligence. And uh, and then the verse 32, which explains about the Tanmatras and the elements, the five Tanmatras and five elements, and they appear from the false ego in ignorance. And uh, it has been explained that uh, the sound is transformed into ether, and uh, from there we have the sensation of touch, and it's converted into air. So the air has, therefore, uh, is then again transformed into fire and uh, so the air has the sensation of touch whereas the next transformation it comes as the fire so fire has a sensation of form also and uh, the touch also and the next transformation is from fire to water and water has taste also along with the previous two characteristics of form and touch and sound and the next transformation is from water to earth, and earth has the fifth element, is the fifth element, the final element, which has the smell also, and along with the previous characteristics of taste, form, touch, and sound. So this was, and uh, now the characteristics of the five, of the Tanmatras and the five cross elements uh, are detailed from verse 33 onwards. In verse 33, the detailing is done about sound. Can you just slow down a little bit? You know, you're just rattling away there very fast. It's, it's technical sorry, information. You know, if you could just slow down a bit more, it will make it yes, much... Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. So verse 33, Maharaj explains about sound. And sound, it's, uh, it explains, or Prabhupada explains, that it conveys the idea of an object. And um, the Tanmatra is, uh, is ether, and, uh, and the ether is explained in verse number 34, which provides space to all the living entities, externally and internally. And uh, all the fixed activities of vital air, sense, and mind are done in the ether. It is the base for the pran, senses, and the mind, Prabhupada says. And in verse 35 and 36, the touch is explained, the tanmatra of air. Now this touch, it is the, uh, the, the attributes are softness, hardness, uh, the sensation of cold, sensation of heat, these are its distinguished attributes, it says. And uh, it is due to the result of Sri Prabhupada says evolution of air which is pro uh, produced from the sky. In verse 37 explains about air Maharaj in which uh, it is explained that in Ayurveda and in Srimad Bhagavatam also that the movement of the air internally and externally if it is all proper, then if we, if we get a healthy body. If there is any obstruction in the body due to the movement of air, it results in various diseases. So therefore, air moving, mixing, it, it, and it, it, we can feel the sense objects, and it gives life to the senses. So these are the functions of the air, Maharaj. Then you in you know, I, I, I don't like you to just sit there and read. Yes, Maharaj. 
you know, if you could look at the camera rather than just sit yes, and read, it would be much better. Yes, yes Maharaj. So therefore, uh, the characteristics of air are also explained in verse 37, which told us about the importance of the air in our body. And uh, in the verse 38 and 39, the, it explains about the form Maharaj, which tells us about the Dhanmatra of fire. It's, it allows us to understand, you know, the dimensions, the quality, the individuality of uh, the of fire. Then, uh, and due to fire, we have the various functions like this, the ability to cook. We, we can also digest the food because of the Jataragni with, within us. And the cold is destroyed due to the fire, evaporation. There are so many uh, uses given for the fire. Even the food, the, the elimination that is done, that is due to the fire. So these are the, all the uses of the fire given in verse 40. Then uh, in verse 41 and 42, it explains about the taste, which is the tanmatra of water. And uh, we, can, uh, we can taste the sweetness or the bitterness, the pungent, sour and salty taste uh, due to this. And uh, then uh, the verse 43 explains about water, which talks about that it uh, uses, that it quenches the thirst, it softens, it extinguishes heat, and uh, it causes satisfaction, it gives life, and uh, relieves our thirst, and all the other uses for water. Then verse 44 and 45 talk about the smell, which is the Tanmatra of earth, and uh, we, we get the taste of whether it's foul, whether it's uh, strong, acidic, mild, fragrant, all these smells, Maharaj, according to the substance with which the air it associates, it tells us about the smell. So we, we can know that what smell is coming from a particular substance. Then verse 46 tells us about the earth, which is the final element, and it says that it is the ultimate uh, transformation of all the uh, elements and it gives shape to the deity form also of the Lord. It is the sun's uh, place of sustenance for all the beings. And, um, and uh, we can, uh, it, it, it has the power to manifest uh, differences in all the beings and all the elements are perceptible because of this element that is the earth. So therefore, this ex, uh, transformation which happens is explained in verse 47 and 49, that sound gets transformed to ether. Ether gets, uh, has the quality for touch, and then it gets transformed into air, which has the qualities of form and touch. Then it gets transformed into fire, which has the quality uh, of form, touch, and ether, then the next transformation is to the water and the last transformation is to the earth. So earth has all the five qualities of smell, taste, form, touch and ether. So it says the, that uh, the characteristics of the former elements exist in the latter element which is coming at the end. So um, the earth has all the qualities of all the preceding elements. So this is what we could uh, just note down, Maharaj. Please forgive me for my for any well, the mistakes that I have committed. <laughs> and please correct me, Maharaj, that we can have a proper understanding. Thank you, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Yes, thank you very much. Very informative. Yeah, we can see that Srimad Bhagavatam, how it gives so much more detailed information. Bhagavad Gita, we just, we're just simply beginning to look at these different elements. But when we come here to this chapter in Srimad Bhagavatam, we're given so much detailed analysis, the nature of these different elements, how they evolve, the characteristics and qualities which they each possess, very detailed manner. So it's a much more elaborate study here in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So this is Sankhya philosophy, looking at these different elements and understanding all their different characteristics. 
Right? Okay, we'll go on to the final group, group number four. First of all, we're going to hear them explain about, what is it? That we have to explain about the universal coverings. Right? So, within the universe, am I echoing? Yeah, we can hear your echo. Yeah, there's echo, right. But you need to turn off your mobile computer using two, uh, two devices. Just turn off one device from audio. Krishna, is okay now? Yeah, better. Hare Krishna. Hare, Hare Krishna. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Mataji, we can hear you before. Now Hare Krishna, you can hear me? Yes, yes can hear you. Go ahead. Before also we were able to hear you, Mataji. Oops, sorry, but I couldn't hear, sorry. Okay, explain the universal coverings. So, within the universal egg, there is the universal form. And that universal form is covered outside by seven layers. Those seven layers are water, air, fire, sky, ego, and mahatatva. So, each of these outside layer is 10 times thicker than the previous layer and the final outside layer is um, a pradam. Final outer covering is pradam. The universe is just shaped like a egg and within this egg-like universe is the Virat Purush. So that is the answer to the uh, first part of the uh, first question which is explaining the universal coverings. Okay. The next one is to describe Virat Purush and to explain the practical lessons drawn from it. So as I mentioned before, Virat Purush is situated in the golden egg lying in the uh, uh, water. So the, the Virat Purush, he divided himself into many departments. I have to refer my notes to look at those various uh, departments. So it's the large gross organ is the subtle sense organ of the Virata Rupa plus the sense devatas. Like for example, the mouth is speech and the fire god. Then the nostrils is the all factory senses and the wind god. Like that, in the verses from 54 to 61, all these details are given. Actually, the Devatas wanted to wake up the Virat Purush. So they re-entered this respective department of the Virat Rupa along with the subtle sense, one after another, to wake up this Virat Rupa. However, what happened is they were unsuccessful. Like fire god entered the mouth along with the organ of speech, but they were all unsuccessful. But when Vasudeva entered the heart along with Chitta, then the Virat Rupa rose up from the water. So what what it means that the prana, mind, and intelligence alone, the sense organs alone, cannot wake up the sleeping soul without the intervention of the super soul. So to contemplate on the super soul through devotion and detachment, that is the uh, most important thing. So without devotional service, we cannot link ourselves with the Supreme. Also one more point that I found like a practical lesson is, for people who are not interested directly to engage in the worship of the transcendental form of the Lord, they are advised to think of and worship the universal form. Hare Krishna. 
How, how should they worship the universal form? How do they do that? Okay, the way they worship the universal form, Maharaj, as I understand is that to understand that Krishna is the cause of all causes, so they cannot relate directly to the absolute truth. They can relate to things of the material world. So when they, re when they relate to things of the material world, they understand that all these things that I'm able to relate to in the material world comes from Krishna, comes from the uh, form of the Lord. So they are able to see all of that in the Virata, uh, Virata Rupa form of the Lord. That way they can relate to it. Yeah, so the, the Vishwarupa, you're saying this is the universal form. All the different elements are there. All the elements of creation are there within the body of that Vishwarupa. Is that right? Yes, Maharaj, that is what is my understanding. Certainly, when you speak about worship of the universal form, I just wonder how, how you can do that. You know, it's not like you could offer something or you could dress or anything, you know, because... Anyway, we hear the, the Vishwarup, that he's a person, he's a form. And so you want to wake him up. <laughs> they're, they're, they're waking. The, the, nothing could wake him up until consciousness entered, was it? Consciousness has to enter to wake up the Vishwarup? Vasudeva. Vasudeva. So Vasudeva is the, the super soul, is it? Yes. Because we heard also Vasudeva was the presiding deity of consciousness. When Vasudeva entered the heart along with the Chitta, the Virata Rupa rose. The Chitta is the contaminated consciousness. Is that right? Chitta means the contaminated consciousness and Vasudev you're telling us is the, the Paramatma. Yes, the super soul. What about, oh, 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 so this, there's, this is the, so the Vishwarupa has a super soul. There's a super soul within the Vishwarupa. Is there an individual soul? For the Supreme Lord, there is no difference between his uh, body and his soul. Right. So, so why didn't his body wake up? What's why does he need this? Why does he need super soul? Well, it was actually not like his body. He was not present until the Vasudeva element, it was just the bare elements that were there. The bare elements cannot wake up on its own without the intervention of the Lord. Ah. So that with the presence of the Lord, then the body becomes spiritualized. Be yes. Becomes activated. So the, the, the the concept of the universal, of the Vishwarup, that all elements of the creation are within the body of the Vishwarup. Right? Yes, Maharaj. So, can you give some examples? Well, for example, I do not in this chapter, in one other chapter I have read that previously the bones are, no, the mountains are like his bones, the oceans are like the uh, water in his navel. The trees are like the hairs on his body. These are the three things I remember, but there were several things like that. Uh -huh. Good. Yeah. Nice. 
Okay. Very good. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. Okay, so we'll go ahead. We'll come back. <clears throat> Let me see. Are you able to see my PowerPoint? No, Mara. No. No? Okay. Wait, I have to open screen sharing. Hmm. Okay, now you can see? Yes, Mara. Okay, so we talked about this, we covered all these different points. We heard about Pradhan and Prakriti, the 25 elements, and differentiated the Nirguna and Saguna Brahman. We heard, we defined the Mahatattva and explained consciousness, false ego, mind, intelligence, and the deities. The transformations from ether to earth and their qualities. And now we just heard the universal coverings and the Virata Rup. Practical lessons from it. What was the practical lesson from the Vishwa Virata Rup, Maharaji? Again, practical lesson from it? Hare Krishna Maharaj, the practical lesson is um, without the intervention of the Lord, nothing uh, happens, nothing is awakened. Right. Therefore, Without devotional service, only by devotional service with detachment we can link with the Supreme Absolute, not just merely with our sense organs. Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you. Nothing can happen without the presence of the Lord. Okay, we'll go ahead here. Text number 72. Therefore, through devotion, detachment and advancement in spiritual knowledge acquired through concentrated devotional service, one should contemplate that super soul as present in this very body, although simultaneously apart from it. So, through devotion, detachment and advancement in spiritual knowledge. This is what we're trying to do with studying Srimad Bhagavatam. We're cultivating spiritual knowledge. At the same time, we're, we want to come, become more devoted. And to become more devoted, we need also detachment. So the process is mentioned by concentrated devotional service. One should contemplate the super soul. This is a big element and this is a big part of the Sankhya Yoga process. They contemplate the super soul, meditation on the super soul. And we'll hear that when we come to chapter 28. We'll describe Astanga Yoga and how they meditate on the super soul. And the Astanga Yoga process is meant for this, there are four sections of meditation, increased concentration, coming to Samadhi, to realize the presence of the Super Soul. So the Super Soul was described, the present in the body, but at the same time apart from it, right? That's the position of the super soul. So Srila Prabhupada gives us the essence of Sankhya in text 72 purport. The analytical study of the elements of material nature and the concentration of the mind upon the super soul are the sum and substance of the Sankhya philosophical system. So we, we've seen here this morning, we've had something of an analytical study of the elements of material nature. And later on, chapter 28, we'll go on to speak about this contemplating the super soul. The perfection of this Sankhya Yoga culminates in devotional service unto the Absolute Truth. So Srila Prabhupada brings us to the goal of this Sankhya Yoga philosophy 
to become devoted, to understand our relationship with the Supreme Lord. All right, that's the end of the PowerPoint. Are there any questions on this chapter? A lot of things have been described. There's a lot of information, a lot of knowledge there. Yes. Um, I just wanted to ask, I've always wanted to ask this question from Public Gita as well, like we just mentioned the mind at the moment and um, where it's represented by Aniruddha and in Bhagavad Gita also um, Lord Krishna says that of the senses he is the mind. Um, so what does that mean? Does that mean that whatever is going on in our mind is Krishna? <laughs> Well, Lord Krishna is describing many things in Bhagavad Gita in that 10th chapter, his vibhutis, right? He said, of the senses I am the mind. So, because the mind is, Prabhupada explains that the mind is controlling the senses, the mind is, it's got jurisdiction over the senses. From the mind the senses act. The thought comes in the mind and then the senses act according to the desire which is there in the mind. So the mind has got that position over the senses. And so that way Lord Krishna is describing, he says, I, I am the mind. Because remember, why did Krishna explain all of these things? That Arjuna wanted to know how to think of Krishna at every moment in the, in, in the course of the his daily life. How can we always remember you? So then Krishna spoke all of those different vibhutis, the different opulences. He said, I am the taste in water. So the active principle of everything is Krishna. Srila Prabhupada explains it in that way. He said, taste of water is the active principle. That is Krishna. So similarly, the mind is, the, is what is really directing and inspiring the senses to act. So is Krishna also the mind? Well, it's a manifestation of Krishna, that Krishna's power is manifested there through the mind. But it's an indirect, it's not, it's not, not personally Krishna, but it's his energy. His energy is certainly there in the mind. Without his energy, we just heard the Virata Rup cannot do anything. So Krishna is everywhere in everything. So he's also there in the mind. So the mind you can also see is also Krishna. It's a manifestation of the power or the energy of Krishna. But at the same time, it's not Swayam Bhagavan, it's not the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna, but rather it's more his impersonal aspect which is being described. That these vibhutis are more his impersonal features. So the mind is like that. We can say that the mind is like the imp an impersonal aspect of Lord Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Are you yes. I have two questions. Okay. One question is, I understand a Pradhan. Pradhan is like undifferentiated state which has got everything, but they are not yet in action. But what is the difference between Mahatattva and Prakriti? Well, the Mahatattva is everything merged together. It's like I gave the example about the halava. Okay. You know that when you, when you cook halava, there's sugar and water and gut, but, uh, butter and so, uh, semolina, it's all there within the halava. But you cannot yes. differentiate the sugar and the, you know, it's all merged together. So the okay. Mahatattva is like that, but Prakriti, the elements of Prakriti are differentiated. They're meant, you know, you, 
you have earth, water, you know, you have a lump of earth, you have a bucket of water, you know, there's a fire, you know. But in the, in the Mahatadva it's just a merge, right? So that's, okay. that's the difference between Prakriti and Mahatadva. So, uh, so Pradhan is also everything is, uh, everything is undifferentiated. Pradhan, so but, but Pradhan undifferentiated. is unmanifested, it's unmanifested, oh. the, the oh. subtle form. Okay, okay. Thank you, Marat. My second question is, I'm actually not able to find the reference. Um, in Chatur Shloki 1, 2933, the second part of the Chatur Shloki, Nanya Yatsat Asat Param. Like, uh, first one, Aham Eva Same Vagre, second line, Nanya Yatsat Asat Param. So, Krishna says that Param is superior to Sat and Asat, and there, Sat is defined as the effect, which is the material uh, creation, and Asat is defined as the cause, which is the material energy. But here, in this chapter, I, I'm not able to find the shloka reference, but one of the chapters, when I was reading, it was the other way around. It was mentioned that Sat is the cause and Asat is the effect. Oh. <laughs> I'll just find, I'll, I'll just go through and find out which, which verse. Yes, okay. You know, it may be there's some editing work required. You know, you're referring to Srimad Bhagavatam. You can find sometimes mistakes or differences. Recently we were reading Srimad Bhagavatam and it mentioned, you know, Krishna went to Vrindavan, uh, oh, Krishna left, uh, left, Krishna left Vrindavan and went to Mathura when he was 16. And in the, in the Srimad Bhagavatam it says when he was 11 he left Vrindavan and went to Mathura. And so the, you know, there's some differences somewhere. Jai Advaita Swami, who was the editor for the, BT, for the BBT books, he said there's, there is editing work required for Srimad Bhagavatam, but he's, he's not willing to do it because he got so much criticism because he edited the Bhagavad Gita. He edited the Bhagavad Gita and made some changes in the Bhagavad Gita to, you know, to, there were a number of things missing from Prabhupada's purports and the devotees who also were doing the, type, doing the uh, typing everything up they were not very familiar with the philosophy, so they would make sometimes mistakes and they couldn't understand sometimes words Prabhupada was saying. So maybe you know yourself, there are people who don't like to accept the new edition of the Bhagavad Gita and they say, we want the original Bhagavad Gita from Prabhupada's time. So Jayadweda Swami, of course, defended the changes and he presented a lot of evidence to show them many things. But some people were very hard to satisfy. And so because he got so much criticism, he doesn't want to do any changes on the Bhagavatam. So there may be some mistakes there. There may be, there, I'm, I'm sure there are many, <laughs> you know, if you really want to find out, you can go to the BBT and you can ask them, you know, because they have a list of different errors there, because people who are often translating from the English books, they have to translate to other languages. So they give them the different corrections, the different mistakes which are there within the text. So there are, some there are a number of mistakes there within the text of the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's inevitable. Prabhupada was really pushing the devotees, you know. He, he really pushed them to get these books printed. Maybe you know about it, how they had a marathon at one point. They printed 17 big books in six months or something. And Prabhupada told them, you know, that you have to, I want all these books printed. And so they really went on a marathon and they didn't hardly sleep the whole day and night. They were just there in the offices 
and they were collapsing and they were working really hard. So they were really on a, a marathon to get the books out. And Prabhupada thought, just get the books out and we can always correct things later on. But it's, it's sometimes sensitive. People say, no, this book was like this in Prabhupada's time, how you can change it? And they say, Prabhupada used this book, Prabhupada never said anything was wrong, how you are changing it? But the fact is there were mistakes, there were differences. And uh, it's just some people are very hard to satisfy. So you Thank have... you, Maharaj. I will just look at it bit by the yeah. Thing. I will look at it. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Pranam, Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Uh, Maharaji, uh, in PPT uh, 11 to 14 uh, shlokas, you have mentioned about the 24 elements, 5 gross, 5 tanmatras, 10 senses, and 4 internal senses, and it is including the chitta. So, Maharaji is like um, what I uh, till now I understood that 4, uh, that, um, okay, 5 gross elements, 5 tanmatras, 10 senses, and uh, shuttle body mind, intelligence, ego, and the 24th one is an unmanifested form of modes of material nature. So is that correct, Maharaj, or what is the chitta means, Maharaj? Yes, it's different in different texts, I know <laughs> what to say, you know. It's not just hard and fast. And similarly with the coverings on the earth, you get different presentations of the coverings of, over the over the universe, you get different. You just have to go with the text, you know, if you're using Bhagavad Gita and it talks one thing, then you use, uh, and then when you use Srimad Bhagavatam, you have to use what it says in the Bhagavatam. Okay. And uh, Maharaji, what is the meaning of Shuddha? Shuddha means uh, Chitta means the consciousness. Only or something else also? My understanding is consciousness, yeah. But we, Mataji read today, contaminated consciousness, wasn't it? Okay. Mm -hmm. And Maharaj like uh, what I also understand till now, like this 24 elements and 25th is soul and 26th is super soul. Is that understanding is correct? Or like because here 25th element is time factor, and 26th is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yes, presented in di different ways, different places. Sometimes it's presented as the soul, sometimes it's presented as time factor. In different places, they say different. Just like the creation, you know, you study the creation in, in second and third canto, they present it different ways. Okay. So, also you've got these different presentations of what are 25, 26 elements. Mm. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. I have a question that is what is prana? Something is called principal prana. Not here actually, it's, uh, I read it in Vedanta Sutra. This principal prana, there are subordinate pranas. Five sub subordinate pranas, prana upon band someone, that is. <laughs> and this principal prana, what is it? Is it the soul plus air element or something like that? Mm. Uh, where, where is this? Which text? Uh, this Vedanta Sutra. Oh, and the Vedanta Sutra. <laughs> principal prana, something called principal prana, and this prana, principal prana, this associates with the soul. When you leave the body, when it leaves the body, the body is dead. Mm. That is principal prana. Okay. Very important thing in our body, but uh, what, is it composed of soul or something, uh, air element or something like that? Well, the prana is something which would come from the soul. It's not not directly the soul, but it's kind of symptom like the like the consciousness which comes from the soul. So the prana also that living force it's also with connected with the soul, but at the same time different from the soul, right? Mm, some uh, material element is there with it. Oh. Yeah, well, I don't know, is it? I have to see it. I, you're saying Vedanta Sutra. Prana. 
I'm, I'd like to hear you read. Where did, it's not in Srimad Bhagavatam? Srimad Bhagavatam, in this five, five pranas with digest food and all. And this. Uh -huh. Five pranas. And sense activities like nervous, nervous activity like that. Okay. Dan, saman, ban, dan, like this, five pranas are there. Uh -huh. Anapan, ban, saman, and dan. So these pranas there, sato. Sorry. Uh, there's sato, the five pranas. They, the, with this uh, help of prana, this uh, prana help in uh, regulating the physical activities. Prana help the soul regulating the physical activities, and with this five pranas, it does that. This uh, activity and the main active doer is principal prana. Oh, so, uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, Hare Krishna Mahati. If I'm mistaken, I've read uh, that uh, the soul uh, floats on five principal prana. So here the five principal prana is mentioned that in Garda Prana also mentioned that the flow, the soul floats on five principal prana. That is Yana, Samana, Upana. So I can't remember all five, but uh, it mentioned the soul floats uh, on five principal prana uh, in the in the region of the heart. So I think what Maharaj uh, Mataji mentioned five principal prana is actually where the soul floats, Maharaj. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Yes. One principal prana and five subordinate pranas. Principal prana accompanies the soul. So, yeah, we we have never we have not seen this. You're, you're quoting from Vedanta Sutra, right? Yes, yes. So this is you know this is not mentioned particularly. We hear about the five pranas. Prabhupada did speak about five pranas. It's there, mentioned the pranas. But we never heard the principal prana. We didn't hear this before. This is something from Vedanta Sutra. Uh, it's not really in our field, in our scope of study, you know. We'll leave you with it to contemplate. We're studying Srila Prabhupada's Srimad Bhagavatam. So we cannot help you with the Vedanta Sutra. <laughs> But Srimad Bhagavatam is the commentary for the Vedanta Sutra. So let's read Srimad Bhagavatam and hear from Srila Prabhupada. That's also Prabhupada. Vedanta Sutra also written by Prabhupada only. Really? Prabhupada never commented Vedanta Sutra. He has a commentary. I read it, took it, downloaded it from the ISKCON site was never published. Uh, it may be published later. Later? It's already 50 years. Anyway, okay, you say Prabhupada already began translating Vedanta Sutra and it was on the website? Yeah? Is that what you're saying? Where did you download it from? How? This, my website is... I downloaded it from an ISKCON site, Vedanta Sutra, Prabhupada's commentary, along with Balada Buddha Hushan, so he explained it, he converted it in English, translated it in English, Prabhupada. Okay. All right, but we are studying Srimad Bhagavatam, I haven't seen this, we haven't seen a mention about principal prana. Yes, that is it. Uh, so, so it's difficult but, uh, for me in to... In our languages, in Hindi or Bengali, I don't know, Bengali, we see that pran leaves the body. That somebody is dead, uh, the pran leaves the body, they say. They don't say that atma leaves or like that. It's a common language, we say pran leaves. Like okay. Pran tag. Pran tag. But the pran is with the soul, just like, you know, when the soul, when the soul leaves, the subtle body also leaves. Right? It's uh, not, it's, yes. So the prana also is uh, this going to be there with the soul. Yes, that is it. We, 
We can't say the soul doesn't leave. If the pran leaves, the soul also leaves. Because the soul left, that's why the prana left. The prana is accompanying the soul. It's the soul which is the principal element there. The subtle body goes with the soul. So the prana also goes with the soul. Yes. Uh, so. Hare Krishna. Yes, Hare Krishna. Uh, in 3.6.7, there are 10 kinds of air it's mentioned. 10 kinds of airs? Yes, the airs of life are called prana, pana, udana, vyana, and samana, and are also differently qualified as naga, purma, krukara, devadatta, dananjaya. So, the one of the airs, the secondary airs, are responsible for the, the like, you know, while leaving the body, one particular air, when leaves the body, that is considered as the person is dead. Okay. So, she was mentioning uh, in her slide that uh, when that prana leaves the body, that's a symptom that, uh, that uh, the soul has left the body. Uh -huh. Yeah, the soul has left the body. Yes, it's the soul. Generally, when we speak about the difference between a living body and a dead body, we just we simply say no soul in the dead body. And you say in Bengali language people talk about prana. But, you know, and certainly in our devotional language we speak about the soul. It's the soul which is the, core, the source of life. You're not going to get prana without the soul. It's like the sun and the sunshine. Yes? Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Yeah? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, any more questions? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes? Antaranga Tulasi Devadasi from Mayapur. First, thank you so much Maharaj for your wonderful class. Um, it's always a pleasure to hear from you in Bhagavatam class or Parikrama. So, thank you so much. Uh, Maharaj, I have two questions. The first one is uh, in regarding in uh, text number 10 of this chapter, we were discussing about Pradhana. In that one adjective is Nityam, eternal. So, it says the Pradhana is eternal. Uh, I couldn't understand that how it is eternal. Maybe uh, then I was thinking that because it is always existing, Pradhana is always there, so it is called eternal. And then there is one more that Pradhana is Sadasat Atmakam. It consists of cause and effect. The Pradhana consists of cause and effect. But we read in uh, Chatushloki Bhagavatam that Aham Eva Samevagre Nanyat Yat Sadasat Param. Krishna says, I alone existed, not even the cause and effect was there at that time. So I couldn't, um, uh, um, what do I say? Both these statements were looking contradictory. So can you please explain that matter? Well, first of all, about the Pradhan being eternal, that Krishna's energies are all eternal. So that Pradhan, remember this is the, it's the unmanifested stage. It, it, it's not going to be, it's not created, not destroyed, just like the soul. Our soul is not created or it doesn't take birth, it doesn't die. So the Pradhan is like that. It may go undergo transformations. A prophet gives the example about clouds forming in the sky. The cloud forms in the sky and appears in the sky. Other times there's no clouds in the sky. But they, they, it's still there. The air is still there. And sometimes you, you, the cloud is there. Sometimes there's no cloud. Sometimes it's the, the rain cloud. Sometimes it's a white cloud. So the Pradhan, sometimes it's manifest, sometimes it's not manifest, but it's still, it's always there. It's unmanifested stage of the elements, so it's always there. As we heard, we can also think of it as one of the coverings of the universe. It's there, as one of the coverings of the universe. It's eternal. Of course, the universe is not eternal. What happens at the time of annihilation? 
it enters into Mahavishnu. Everything enters into Mahavishnu at the end of the life of Brahma. And then, at, at, when, when, after, after one night is over, then again the creation comes. And so then it's just, it's eternal, but it's within Mahavishnu. And then it comes out from Mahavishnu, and then again there's creation. So it's always there, but it's, it just undergoes transformations and different phases. Sometimes it's manifest, sometimes it's not. But it's eternal. So then... So that, what I understood was that uh, uh, in the beginning of creation, the Pradhana is present in the unmanifested form as in potency of the Lord, because the potencies of the Lord are always existing. Yes, right, that's true. And uh, my second question was, Maharaj, uh, just a small understanding that um, I just want to see if my understanding is correct. That is, we understood that Pradhana is there, is unmanifested, and then the time comes, agitates, and then we have Prakriti. And Prakriti uh, is again agitated, is again uh, impregnated with the Jivas, and that is Mahatattva. Am I right, Maharaj? Yes. Okay. I just, I want to know that is it Pradhana, and then Prakriti, and then Mahatattva, that is the flow. Oh, it's Pradhan, and then Prakriti, and then Mahatava? I wanted to uh, correct. It. Am I correct or am I wrong? I, I couldn't understand this. Well, I, Pradhan, from the Pradhan comes the Mahatava. Then from Mahatava, then the elements of Prakriti. Because uh, Maharaj, it's because in the translation to text 19, uh, it is mentioned that uh, Prakriti is uh, impregnated by the Supreme Lord. So that's why even I was getting a little confused. Uh, but then in the commentary, Prabhupada is saying that here Prakriti means Pradhan. So yeah, it, it's true. That it's, all Pradhan, it's all Prakriti, whether it's Pradhan or Mahatattva, it's all Prakriti. But it's just different phases of Prakriti. That in one phase of Prakriti is unmanifest, another stage is manifest, but it's all mixed together. You've got it in the in the halava form or the kitchari form, and then other time then you've got it manifest in different elements, all differentiated. So it's all Prakriti, but it's just in different stages of the the creation. Sometimes it is subtle, sometimes it's manifest, but all merged together, and other times differentiated. So what do you mean by what phase of Prakriti are you talking about? But it's all Prakriti. So can you say, Maharaj, that uh, the unmanifested form of Prakriti is Pradhan and the manifested form is the Mahatattva? Yeah, you can okay. say that. But the ma and in the form of the Mahatattva, it's all merged together. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Okay. Any other question? Uh, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. Uh, I want to ask you one more thing. Could you maybe clarify me about Saguna and Nirguna? Saguna and Nirguna. I, I hear that the uh, Hindu worship is like Saguna worship. Because it's like David has elements and we worship it is transcendental, Lord is transcendental, but we worship him according to he has form and made of stone or another element. So who can understand that? So for like Sabuna. Yes. Certainly some people will say deity is Saguna Brahman. But we can also say deity is nirguna brahman because deity has no material qualities. The deity is archa vigraha. It's the form of the Lord. Personally, he descends in the form of the deity, but he descends in material elements. So material elements would be saguna brahman, but because it becomes a deity and the Lord enters into the deity, it becomes nirguna brahman. Yeah. 
through the devotion, through the worship of the devotees, the Lord appears in the deity form. So it's certainly transcendental. But the elements which are used for the, for the form of the deity, that would be material, you could say material, that is Saguna Brahman. So some people, Mayavadis like that, they are worshipping, they are worshipping Saguna Brahman. But devotees are worshipping Nirguna Brahman. Yeah? Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Tender Pranam. Can you more elaborate about the Nirguna and Saguna Brahma? Well, I don't know how to elaborate more on it. We said Saguna Brahman, everything is Brahman, right? There's a statement from Vedanta Sutra often quoted in Prabhupada's purports, Sarvam Kauvidam Brahma. Shankaracharya promoted that a, a lot. Sarvam Kauvidam Brahma. Everything is Brahman. Right? Everything is Brahman. Everything is the energy of the Supreme Lord. And so it's all Brahman. But there's different states of Brahman. We have the Saguna Brahma. Saguna means with material qualities. So the, the Brahman can have material qualities. Although everything is the Lord's energy, it's come from the Brahman, the material creation comes from the Brahman. It's, it's Brahman, but it has material qualities. Material qualities, like we talked about the sense of the, the well, things which we perceive with our senses, sound, Form, taste, smell, these things, this touch, this is all saguna, these material qualities. Now, the Lord and the Lord's energies, the spiritual energies, are nirguna brahman. They're not material. We say, Atashi Krishna Namadi Nabhavad Gramindriyani. Krishna cannot be understood by the material senses. The holy name of Krishna is not material. It's not a material sound vibration. It's a pure transcendent. When we chant without offense, then it's nirguna, but no, not material, no material qualities. So the Lord. The form of the Lord in our de the deity form is not material. And similarly, those things in relation with the Lord are not material. They're transcendental. The Lord's paraphernalia, medanga, kartals, the things we use for deity worship, they're all nirguna brahman. They're all transcendental spiritual energy. Uh, sorry, Maharaj, can we say also that Vishwarupa, Dratrupa is also the same or it's Sagu? No, can we? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting thing. Huh? How do we judge the Vishwarupa? Because Vishwarupa is a material form. It's a material form. But when the Lord enters, then it becomes transcendental. But it's not eternal. The, that Vishwarup is not eternal. It's temporary form of the Lord. But we could consider it also Nirguna Brahman, when the Lord enters with the presence of the Lord there. All right? Thank you, Maharaj. Really Any other questions? Okay. Are we going to have class tomorrow? Tomorrow is Nityananda Triodesi. Who who's the, who is supposed to be hosting this class? Who's the coordinator? 
Is everybody free uh, tomorrow? Samara. Is everyone? Samara. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah I, I usually open the meeting for the class. So are we having class tomorrow? Uh, yes, Maharaj. We have class tomorrow, eh? Same time. Yeah. Okay. Same time. All right. I just wondered because some people were busy, they want to take part in the program for Lord Nichananda's appearance. All right. So we'll meet tomorrow. Yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Okay. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Jai. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Wonderful class, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you.